Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Borderwise, and welcome back to From the Depths. Let's build. Where we've got our final episode of dealing with this artillery cruiser. This is not a. I gotta say, spoiler alert. Uh, this is not a build that I'm probably going to be taking into a campaign anytime soon. This is kind of just a fun uh, build, fun practice build, uh, trying things out, experimenting, and seeing. How to do mortars and uh as what tends to be the case um with builds like this that are over a period of time i got better at the game uh while i was building it so i was looking back um at this and thinking damn it this thing was outdated long before it was even finished it's like the freaking zoom uh cookie for you if you know what i'm talking about a lot of you probably know what i'm talking about um so yeah, so what's happening on screen right now is that I'm implementing uh, the uh, turret-mounted missile interceptors that uh, I have uh, actually found a real fondness for in um, uh, some other builds that I've done. Uh, the new battleship I've been working on, the Titan Slung, uh, it uses them to brilliant effect. It's I really like uh, mounting uh, missile interceptors on turrets now because it's just convenient. Um, it means they're always pointed in the right way. Uh, so the first little bit of this video is just, well, setting that up, and it's quite a cunning system uh, that we've got going. It's just, um, what do you call it? It is, uh, basically, it's like two missile controllers uh, hidden inside the, inside the ship, and they're just, um, you know, they're controlling two different sets of missile interceptors, uh, controlled by SeaWiz controllers, and they're prioritizing... Uh, one set is prioritizing uh, targeting missiles, and the other is prioritizing targeting crams. I probably have to go back and change that a little bit so they actually prioritize properly. Um, because, yeah, like, uh, later on, the, the, this video has a lot of testing, uh, by the way. I was kind of look at this thinking, like, well, I'm basically done here. Like, not really much more to do. Uh, so I was just combat testing, because when in doubt, if you're not sure what to do next uh, for your craft, like, just chuck it in a fight and see what needs changing. Now, uh, uh, what definitely did need changing was uh, the addition of not only missile interceptors, but torpedo interceptors, because uh, uh, the things on these turrets, they can uh, go for torpedoes, because the Sea Wiz controller will target them. Um, but they don't prioritize them for some reason. I probably need to tweak the settings a little bit so that... Uh, they do go for torpedoes that will blow your craft up from beneath, because uh, that did happen a few times. Uh, what can you say about this uh, artillery cruiser? It's like good proof of concept that um, mortars are a kind of cheap, nasty way to get a huge amount of firepower into something that wouldn't, like nothing else, would fit uh, in there. But yeah, it's like. Yeah, it's like mortars, uh, there's problems with that. And like at the mock tournament that I've been running, which I'm probably going to record more episodes of that, right after I'm done recording this, I'm excited. Now I've made a promise to myself uh, out loud, I'm going to have to do it, because if I don't do it, then, well, I'll be a, I'll be a silly hypocritical boy then, won't I? Uh, I blanked out for a second. What's happening on screen? Oh, so, so we're tweaking the detection settings because we've added bearing rangefinders and, well... Yeah, retro reflection sensors got to go because it's not that useful. And this is a very precarious superstructure right here in the front. It's just got, you know, it's mounted on poles. Um, but yeah, it's like, I don't know. I'm not sure how serious this build is. Like, you know, this is de It's not a meta craft in the first place because it's mainly armed with crams for crying out loud. I generally don't think of anything armed with crams as it being anything more than kind of fun, because here's the thing. Uh, I love cram cannons. They're by far my favorite weapon from the depths. Like, I think people sometimes, like, sometimes, it's less and less uh, all the time. They come to, sometimes think that I use them because I think they're be they're really good. I don't. Uh, they're, they're kind of terrible in combination with, in uh, comparison to everything else. In fact, um, uh, I can shout out a video I recorded ages ago, uh, the From the Depths weapon tier list uh, that I made. Uh, like, from top tier to bottom tier, or rather bottom tier to top tier. I put crams right at the bottom. 
Um, oh, right now I'm just looking for something that's roughly the same cost as this thing uh, to test it against, and I'm having trouble because this thing is about 640,000 materials, and weirdly enough, there's not a lot of uh, mortar-worthy, uh, well, mortar-vulnerable craft that's, you know, like that. Um, that's in the 640,000 range. So we start with the bull, with the bull shark, which is interesting. The bull shark doesn't even really fire at us because I think, uh, I think the bull shark has, um, kind of, uh, the bull shark has, like, very restrictive, um, settings on its, uh, local weapon controller, so it won't target things that are below a certain altitude. As you can see there, they do go for the torpedoes, those are the interceptors. But getting back to the tier list, um, yeah, so that's one nice hit there. Um, I put crams right at the bottom, so like d bottom tier weapons, uh, because uh, even though they've got great damage, uh, they've got poor shell speed, poor firing speed, and they just have a lack of versatility. Uh, they just, they just can't do stuff, basically. Um, yeah, and like, well, this, these mortars, you can see, they're not doing a spectacularly good job. Uh, the, mort the mortars on this thing are not optimized at all. Like, I'm looking back on them and cringing a little bit, because, like, crams these days, a fewer bigger ones are better than just spamming smaller ones, that's just how they work. Um, yeah, I keep distracting myself. The tier list, tier list, tier list. Um, uh, like, the crams are right at the bottom of the tier list there. Um, uh, and the, the reason for that is because drills, uh, even now, I think that drills... Uh, both simple drills and steep drills, they're so terrible that, um, uh, I forgot they existed. Uh, they've gotten better, they've been buffed. Uh, but still, like, those are probably true bottom tier, and then crams are just above them, and then everything else is higher. Uh, so yeah, that's a long way of saying, um, ooh, dear. Yeah, you're gonna need torpedo defense, mate, but... Anyway, that is a long way of saying that, as much as I love crams, I feel- I fully acknowledge that they're kind of sucky. Um, just... If you have to choose between a cram cannon and an advanced cannon, and if you actually want, like, really good performance, and, like, versatility is the big thing, you want it to be able to shoot at a wide variety of targets, like, go for the APS every time, really. Like, um, uh, funny thing, talking about uh, that with the Titan Slung, um, and if you haven't been watching my Battleship Diary uh, series, like, I highly recommend it because it's great fun. I roast my own work nonstop. Um, Oh, here's the fun thing. We're playing as it here. It's like, um, it's kind of reaching the limit of what a cram craft is capable of, really. Um, at least for any practical measure. Uh, because it's just, crams need to get so big past a certain point that it's like, a railgun that's much smaller would just be so much better. In like, almost every single way. Uh, case in point, um, I am quite proud that this, uh, artillery cruiser can, uh, well, that's one example of why, well, a convenient game almost crashing there. Uh, that's one uh, way that mortars have a huge advantage, is that they do hit things from the top, where the armor's usually weaker. The problem is, is that they miss, like, all the freaking time, and that's annoying. And, um, yeah, so, the missile interceptors are just going non-stop, and it is sweet how they take out, um, non-stop, uh, the, uh, tier's missiles, uh, Armor's holding up reasonably well. The poles are not the best move. Poles are not the best move uh, at all. It's like really not much of a crew. I think if I was going to do this again, I'd make something much smaller, much lighter, and have, uh, uh, with the mortars, uh, quality over quantity. So I just have like... Oh yeah, so that's a problem. That's uh, That was a large torpedo that did that. It managed to take out the block that the turret was sitting on. Um... But yeah, it's a pretty even fight between this Missile Cruiser and the Tier. Uh, the Missile Cruiser, I think, is a little bit uh, more chonky. Uh, but also, yeah, the Tier is considerably more expensive. So those uh, those uh, Hollow Point HE EMP crams are actually really nice. I do like them a lot, because they, uh, they're just great disabling weapons. They blow... they strip the outside armor off, and then they fry things with the EMP. It's pretty good. You can see, like, the shutting down the tier as a missile system is quite, uh, quite nicely, and kind of just ruined uh, the buoyancy a bit. And uh, this is where mortars are kind of a problem, because the tier does uh, do kind of a wiggly back and forth uh, quite a lot, and it's quite narrow. So, 
Yeah, it's like the the mortis miss a lot. I suppose it would help, but like, yeah, if the mortars were more accurate. And here we got the problem that torpedo just straight up missed. And this is where um, interceptors on their own uh, kind of are a problem. Because even if you've got a seawiz controller controlling them, they can be kind of just well dumb and not go for the thing that's an actual threat. So uh, yeah, probably like. Uh, yeah, I could definitely tweak uh, the, um, what do we call it? I can definitely tweak the uh, the settings on those, um, on those SeaWiz controllers a little bit more so they actually do prioritize, uh, like, stuff that's big and stuff that's close. Um, because if it's a small or medium missile, like, okay, fine, the, the ship can shrug that off a little bit. But if it's a big thing, you do want to drop the amount of damage it does by damaging the projectile. Uh, before it hits you, because otherwise it really, really hurts. So, yeah, like, also might want to, like, later on, like, uh, spoiler alert, I do add, like, a little torpedo interceptors uh, to this uh, artillery cruiser. Uh, but, uh, like, I maybe should, should change them out for medium ones, because I used small ones, uh, which is a problem if large torpedoes are coming at you. And uh, this is where it's a really good idea to, like, just have backup propellers us to in the wet space underneath your craft, because I think both the big ones were blown off. Or disabled. So we're still uh, trundling along quite nicely. Yeah. I'm actually wondering, like, I might go back to the drawing board with mortars a little bit and experiment uh, what muzzle velocities really work well. And, uh, yeah, this is the point where I'm like, yeah, no, we need more torpedo defense, because, uh, uh, somebody be better bring better condiments, because this mustard is not cutting it. Uh, somebody bring a sharper condiment, because this mustard is not cutting it. Uh, you know, did you know that repeating a joke uh, again uh, makes it funnier? Alright, so this is where I kind of try and fix the priority thing a little bit. And, uh... Looking back on it, I could do more here. There's more rule sets you could add to this uh, SeaWiz. Uh, wait, I just reversed it. Oh no, that no wonder it wasn't working. Oh, thank goodness I saw that. I need to change that, like, pronto. Pronto, I need to change that. Oh dear. Alright, that's annoying. Uh, well, now I'm just going to sit here frustrated because I've seen what I've done wrong, and I've done it very wrong indeed. Oh, here's a thing that I've been meaning to try uh, for a while. I have uh, no idea if this is going to work well. Uh, rubber is, for those of you who don't know, uh, the number one EMP proofing thing now. So, one thing I am kind of want to see if it works, and let me know if this works, by the way, is to put surge protectors on rubber blocks uh, just in your uh, craft, so the surge protector kind of pulls... Uh, the EMP jolt away from vital components, and then uh, the jolt is kind of smothered uh, by um, by the rubber. So, like, it really uh, dissipates the EMP charge a lot. So do something like that. It's just in a nice protected space. So it pulls the EMP surge, like, all the long way around uh, to go uh, get fried over there. And I do the same thing up here. Uh, I, just, uh, I just... I'm not sure why I use poles. I just, I, don't, I like poles. I still am recovering from a pole addiction. So it's something like that. It pulls the EMP surge up and then just makes it go through the rubber uh, rubber block, which, like, I think reduces the EMP surge, like, by a huge amount. Like, a huge amount it reduces it. Um, so, yeah, like, a spawning against the tier again. And just, um... I think this EMP proofing does actually kind of help a little bit uh, against those uh, large uh, EMP torpedoes. Yeah, so right here we got a... I think we're kind of seeing the missile interceptors sh trying to go for the missiles which are further away. Which is a problem, because they're not supposed to do that, and it's because I set it up wrong. Uh, a lambs would do very nicely with this thing as well because you see there I'm looking like oh what the hell what's happening why are you going why aren't you going for the torpedoes it's because you set it up wrong dummy it is interesting that the torpedoes sometimes like overshoot underneath this thing I have no idea why they do that uh, so yeah this um, yeah this a lot of the video is just this by the way we're about halfway through 
and there's just a lot of testing. Also, yeah, stronger mortars, man, because, like, there's multiple points where, like, you get a whole volley of mortars, like, landing right on top of a turret, and they don't disable it, because the tier actually has decent turret armor. Not amazing, but decent. And just proper armor-piercing mortars would just go straight through the turret gap, down to the turret, and, like, wreck shop. And, uh... Yeah, so this is the point where I'm like, you know what, we, we actually, we definitely need uh, some dedicated torpedo defense, because, uh, uh, that ain't cutting it. Uh, that definitely ain't cutting it. And decide to do the ACB block naming trick, because that's a good idea. Because uh, it's, I think I did this mainly uh, because I was noticing that those uh, torpedoes were putting EMP surges, like, through the lower hull, so probably best not to put too much uh, EMP vulnerable stuff down there. And having said that, I proceed to put a missile controller down there, so no worries, mate. That makes sense. Um, I actually do have enough, um, I do have enough power and possibly enough room to just have a tiny little LAM system or something like that. Or maybe shield projectors or something like that. I was roasting shield projectors the other day. Some people were slightly affronted. Well, not affronted, they quite rightly uh, pointed out um, just how shield projectors are useful. But my point still stands um, in the video, which was meant to be a tutorial, but it just ended up me being, like, just ranting a lot about how shield projectors are kind of bad. Which most people seem to agree with, uh, but, um, I don't know, not entirely. Um, mainly, I could have emphasized a lot more just how good they are with lasers. It's just, like, if smoke's not enough, uh, shield projectors might actually save your bacon uh, quite a bit. But that's the thing, it's like, um, oh, I don't remember uh, who it was, so apologies, I never remember people's uh, usernames. Uh, but, um, somebody did the math, uh, like, with um, comparing smoke uh, to uh, shield projectors of various strengths. Uh, oh yeah, so we're just adding a little new little ammo compartment because we kind of need it. Um, but yeah, so smoke is, like, the, the short answer is smoke is better. Smoke reduces uh, laser damage a lot more than uh, shield projectors do. And smoke is actually a lot easier to place on your craft. And doesn't require power, it just requires materials. So yeah, it's just like, even there, it's like, yeah, shield projectors can help. Uh, but, um... Yeah, so that's just me testing that that's working, and it's not working because I uh, the ACP set up wrong. It's set to uh, launch when missiles happen rather than torpedoes, which is a problem. But anyway, so it's like... What was I saying? So yeah, you can't get away with just using smoke. Um, and you don't have to worry about shield projectors. The shield projectors are kind of like the, I the icing on the cake, so to speak. Um, when you've got spare power and you haven't got... You know, and you can't think of anything else to do with it. Uh, which does make them, I guess... Uh, if you're like me and if you're not very good at planning ahead with designs, uh, they're better than ring shields in that respect, because ring shields you kind of have to plan around. Uh, you have to think ahead about the space inside your craft and uh, put your ring shields uh, in and around the place in a way that means that they don't, you know, take out your ammo compartments or something. Uh, so yeah, I'm a salty shield person. So anyways, we're just, uh, I guess, testing this, and now the torpedo intercepts are working, and they're kind of doing okay. I might just make more of them. It's just, you know, when in doubt, add way more little interceptors, because I think we could make that a lot bigger. In fact, I will do that. I'll just add a bunch more interceptors. So, yeah, just finishing touches off screen. Just do that. Yeah, that's a lot of blocks falling off. That's not good. Uh, that's railguns for you. Uh... That is railguns for you. They do tend to melt blocks off like no one's business. And... ouch. Yeah, actually those torpedoes are nasty because they're just kind of, um... I think they're... they're, uh, they have ballast tanks which are set to... Damn, look at those intercepts. They are doing work. Yeah, wow, not one of that volley got through. It's amazing. Man... I love miss I love missile interceptors. They're kind of derpy as hell sometimes, but yeah, they do work. So yeah, like I said, I am quite pleased that this uh, thing just kind of can uh, mano y mano a tear uh, without really trying. Um, I mean, it does try. The poor girl, she does try hard. Um, but yes, yeah, like, um, oh yeah, now we're testing against a great white. 
uh, which, um, I don't know, this is, a uh, uh, the Great White's a lot more expensive than this, so it's like seeing, like, can you hold your own against this thing? Um, the Great White is kind of, it's simultaneously an easy ship to counter, but also a giant pain in the ass, uh, because it's got massive crams and huge missiles, uh, which means that anything, well, like this artillery cruiser, is actually quite vulnerable to it. If you can't, if you don't move fast, uh, the Great White is kind of, kind of make a mess out of you. And there's something, because the missiles are so big, it means that any kind of, um, unless you set your missile defense up perfectly, it just, ugh. Yeah, so we've already, like, lost the engine compartment because those crams. Like, you do underestimate crams at your peril. Uh, just think, like, oh, n never mind, I've, I've got interceptors, I've got lambs, I've got sewers. Um, like, you know, crams don't scare me, but, um... But, uh, yeah, then something like the Great White shows up and it has, like, what is it? It's got, like, 12 giant armor-piercing crams. It's like, okay, there's, uh, not much armor in the world that can take this on. I actually want to kind of, uh, chuck, um, a Great White against, uh, the Megalodon and just see how well it does. It won't win. It certainly won't win. Uh, but, um, I reckon the Meg will get more than just scratches on her. Meg from accounting. And, uh, yeah, these mortars are very inaccurate, and I'm not a fan of that. Also, uh, lambs, baby, lambs. Um, that is kind of a hard cap. Uh, small crams are pretty much not worth it, I'd say. Because, you know, just everything destroys them before they even hit. And they're slow, and they are fire slow. There's really not much love uh, for small cram cannons and the cram spam. I mean, I guess it makes sense. It's like the whole joy of cram cannons is like they're giant guns and they go boom and that's fun and I just basically summed up why I'm a cram gunner till the day I die in that sentence. Okay, so now uh, we're just mucking around at this point. We're like, we're basically done uh, with the build and now we're just saying, hmm, if one artillery cruiser can't do it, how about two of them? Spoiler alert, they do manage it simply because like, you know, they just outnumber them completely. Also, very nice that this thing has a low freeboard and uh, uh, the, uh, the like, yes, shots tend to miss over it. Yeah, I've got to go fix that. Those Seawiz controllers really got to go do that. Really got to go do that because those cram shells hurt and they need to be damaged a bit. Yeah, ouch. Uh, this is uh, this is the ouchy part. So I say like, yeah. Uh, somebody did say in the comments at one point that um, the bigger your craft, like kind of the more firing pieces you need, so to speak. Because if you do what I do and have giant guns with just one single barrel, what that means is is that uh, the whole turret, uh, no matter how big it is, it gets kind of disabled if it just gets you know shot in a specific place. Uh, which I kind of half agree with, I guess. Um, the bigger your craft, the more redundancy it should have. And you should have kind of like multiple turrets, I guess. I don't know, it's like, because here's the thing about From the Depths, there's very few hard and fast rules. There's just strongly recommended guidelines, which are just that, guidelines. It, like, if you're good enough, you can break all the rules and get away with it. Um, so yeah, it's like, I've seen craft both like faction craft and craft I've seen off the workshop and stuff like that. A getaway with both just a single giant gun and like spamming multiple smaller ones. And it's like, yeah. Yeah, there's no, there's, there's very few hard and fast rules. Those which aren't just, you know, the hard numbers of the game, so to speak. It's why I say like, um, it's always fun actually whenever I do a video it can be annoying as hell, uh, I will be honest, but uh, most of the time it is quite refreshing to, like, I say something in a video and it's like, if it's an opinion or something like that, and I, or even if it's a straight up fact, like, shield projectors are kind of sucky. I'm just kidding, that's mostly opinion. Um, but yeah, it's like, uh, like, people will take, uh, will uh, call me out on that and saying, well, actually I find etc, etc. Which produces an interesting dynamic of communication, I feel. Because when people say something like, oh, here's a good example, like ages, this is like long before the last major cram update, for instance. 
Um, people were saying, like, I was saying that, you know, flash suppressors weren't really worth it. Uh, which, for those of you who uh, don't know or don't remember off the top of your head, that's the, that's the cram barrel that uh, slows down the shell, but uh, also makes it so that uh, munition warners uh, don't see it as soon. So it reduces the detection range of the shell. Um, so, I was saying that's not really useful because in my experimentation, I never really found a good use for that. Um, but then people were saying, like, what? I use that all the time. And so, um, then, like, pressing the question further, I, like, these people were, like, throwing, like, a hundred cram shells uh, at the target, um, you know, at a time. So they're really laying into the cram spam anyway. <laughs> so it's like, well, of course it works for you. Like, you're really spamming those crams. Uh... I wish I could cr uh, uh, spam crams more. Uh, but anyway, um, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, so it's like it's things like that, because like you realize uh, that the way you're testing things... Oh, it's so nice when the mortars blow a turret off uh, and do not damage the, the freaking torpedo tubes, which are causing me such grief. Um, so anyway, it's always interesting to see just how uh, how you test things just a little bit different leads you to different conclusions. Science is hard. Science is 100% worth it, but science is hard. Um, yeah, so it's like one brilliant example of that is the uh, pole shenanigans. Like I made, uh, people showed me concrete results and like how, how they were testing whether poles made decent armor or not. And uh, the difference between their tests and mine like illustrated that um yeah it's like all right so i missed a few things uh, in my testing because of how i did it and they missed a few things in testing due to how they did it um so yeah like the the difference being that um uh, damn it i'm watching this and like oh yeah so this is the final part of the build pretty much where we're adding repair bots and repair tentacles and just messing around with camo and stuff uh, but yeah so ah shakes what was it? Oh yeah, so uh, people would or tended to test tend to test their armor point blank. Oh, there's some more rubber, and um, I don't do that. I do it at a little bit of a distance, which uh, changes the way that poles kind of behave, I guess. And yeah, there's more surge protectors, I guess. We lots of surge protectors, just in case. Uh, anyway. Um... What was I? What was I saying? What was I saying? What was I doing? All right, so this is basically the part. I'm not bothering to paint this, by the way, because I've decided that uh, you, even though it does look good and is kind of realistic, that kind of red rust-proof paint on the bottom. Um, I'm lazy. I'm fully embracing my laziness, and also I just like using, like, colors and stuff. Uh, camo, I mean, not colors. And so yeah. Messing about with colors a little bit. I am fond these days also of uh, using different camo patterns for arc for not arctic. I was reading out loud what I was seeing uh, for metal and alloy, uh, just because I think it looks. I think this looks rad as hell. Just like yeah, it's kind of yeah. What was the, yeah, and this is where I'm just like let's let's test against insulation because that's really what this thing is. It's an insulation killer. It's like kind of a. Uh, it's particularly with, uh, in there's some cases in the Neater campaign, uh, where, you know, the, you know, there's big installations, there's lots of things that kind of are hiding behind terrain a little bit, or things like giant uh, railgun emplacements, which are really dangerous, and uh, it's best to have a nice big hill in between you and them. Which reminds me, I really should um, set different AIs controlling the mortars and the main crams of this thing, um, if I can find room in there for it. Maybe I will do that, maybe I won't. Um, but yeah, it's like... Uh, yeah, 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 what can you do? What can you do with a BA in English? Uh, what are you doing? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Alright, so... Like, that probably confused the hell out of you, because... Um, uh, I'm commenting over this like video while watching it. 
and uh, Windows Media Player started playing it over again. So I was like, what the hell? What? Haven't we seen this before? <laughs> but yeah, no, 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 we're done. And so yeah, that is the uh, this artillery cruiser, which is unnamed. I'm not probably not going to give it a name because I'm bad at names these days. Uh, it will be on the workshop. Check the description. Uh, there's the link there. Uh, so you can have a play around with it. You can make it a lot better. Uh, if you do want to improve it, like, I think the first stop is the mortars. Like, the mortars are not great cram Tetris. They're literally crap Tetris. Um... So yeah, I would change that. I would very much change that. And um, yeah, thank you all so much for watching and for sticking uh, sticking with me through this uh, little Let's Build series. And um, yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell.